So this patient has um, steroid-induced glaucoma and is count fingers in the left eye and has advanced glaucoma but good central vision in this eye. I injected the mitomycin before the surgery. I wound up having a little subconjunctival hemorrhage here. We're going to make our pyridomy. If you are doing mitomycin with sponges, you have to open up a wider area. The tenons inserts a millimeter to two millimeters behind the conjunctiva. So I want to make sure I have that cleared off. And I have nice loose conjunctiva, so we don't have to dissect back too much. Just go back a little bit more. So I'm going to create my scleral flap. First I'll cut the sides up. Just trying to get a nice even plane. There we go. And up into clear cornea. And you can see how far I can put my blade in there. So I have it nice, a nice extension into the cornea lamellae. So you can see that we have the transition to the blue zone, right anterior to where my wex cell is. And as long as we stay working in that zone, we should have a nice anterior trabeculectomy. I'm going to pre-place my apical suture. And then we'll make a paracentesis. I'm going to keep that flap centered right now. Now you do not have to use heel on during trabeculectomy. You can just try to um, either use an anterior chamber maintainer or pre-place your stitch and have that and be sure that you can close the eye very quickly. I'm going to want it because she's phakic. I'm going to want to do an iridectomy. So I'm going to enter the chamber, then I'm going to have the punch. Enter and go across. Punch with the Kelly punch. Go in, lift up, make it vertical and punch back. And I'm going to loosely tie down this, reform the chamber, and make sure my iris goes back in. Good. And we can sort of encourage the iris to come back in. A little bit of BSS, please.
And because we have access to a diode laser that for suture lysis, we're going to put in permanent sutures. So the slip knot again, a single pass. Then you go under there and around the back. Grab, keep your needle holder hand steady and slide your other knot on top. And now we're going to evaluate how much flow we have. So I, I put BSS in the anterior chamber. First thing I do is make sure that I can maintain a chamber so she has a nice deep chamber. And then I'm going to press on the eye and feel, oh, the eye actually feels a little bit firm. So I'm going to see how much flow is coming. And there's not enough flow for that high pressure. So now I can loosen my stitches. And now let's see how much is flowing just by loosening that one stitch. Quite a lot. And now I'm going to see how firm the eye feels. Still a little bit firm. Let's see how the flow goes and where it settles down. I can loosen this one a little bit too. And that seems pretty good. We're going to take some BSS again. So now we'll tie them down. Two tires, please. Try not to change the tension on the, on the suture. You can see if they'll bury. Sometimes they do. I use a very fine needle so they don't always bury. Before we close, we'll double check the eye. Chamber's good, pressure's good. And I make a nice Nice big bite.
So if you make a relaxing incision, you're going to have to run that wound, run the suture back. That's why I usually make my initial incision a straight across so I don't have a relaxing that I need to do. I'm just going to put these um, extra stitches in just for security. So we can see our trabeculectomy flap with our three stitches in it, our wound across, nice and taut along the limbus, well sealed on either side, anterior chambers deep, the blood is blowing up nicely. So now you can see the blood is elevated all in here and nice and taut along the limbus.